in Jesus name we pray our father in heaven we want to thank you for a time like this we are grateful for this knowledge concerning a nanny or a maid we are praying that Lord you will lead us if there is the cause to take any decision in this regard in the name of Jesus that we will not give our life into the hand of our meat in the name of Jesus Christ and now we are going into another discussion and we believe that you will still lead us in the mighty name of Jesus that at the end of it we will also gain something that will help us in resolving conflicts in our homes in the name of Jesus in Jesus mighty name we pray can we take our seat now amen uh, we are going to look at another uh, topic in the short talk which is handling church conflicts in marriage handling church conflicts in marriage uh, we have seen that a church conflicts uh, can arise where the couple worship differently and uh, also in a situation whereby because of uh, doctrinal or denominational differences argument or disagreement can arise uh, because of this and then uh, we also know that believers are of the opinion, some of the believers are of, of the opinion that in the home, God has put the man as the head of the house, and therefore the wife must follow him to where he is worshiping. And then we will look at some things whether it is right scripturally that the wife must follow the husband to where the husband is worshiping uh, we have seen from the scripture that it can only be possible or realistic where both parties that's the couple they are born again they understand God and they are working together with God and then it will be possible for them to worship in the same place. Or the man can say, my wife, let us do it together. And that's the area where uh, the couple will enjoy fellowship together in the same church. But where the couples are not of the same mind in terms of uh, some doctrine or some issues that uh, arises in their own places of worship then problem will also arise uh, we have also seen something in uh, Ezekiel chapter 18 Ezekiel chapter 18 we will read uh, verses 4 we will jump to 20 and 21 behold all souls are mine as the soul of the father so also the soul of the son is mine the soul that sinned it shall die verses 20 the soul that sinned it shall die the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him but if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he had committed and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. From this scripture, we understand that God is interested in every soul. In as much as God says that the two shall become one flesh God did not say 
the two shall become one soul. They have different soul. The man has a soul. The woman has a soul. And each of them work to protect that soul. As God said, that all the souls are mine, the soul of the father, which means also that uh, the soul of the wife, the soul of the son, the soul of any other person is different. God is interested in every soul. And God is watching because he has said, any soul that sinned, that soul shall die. If the husband sinned, the judgment comes upon the husband. If it is the wife that sinned, the woman will face her own judgment. So, going to heaven is an individual race. It is not that because you are married together, then you will go to heaven as husband and wife. It is only when both of you worship God in the same way or you are faithfully worship the Lord together. We also as can see in Luke 17, 34 to 36. Luke chapter 17, verses 34 to 36, where the Bible tells us about a situation that two shall be together. One will be taken and another left. It is also a possible that the husband and wife shall be on the same bed when the rapture will take place. If the man is doing his thing according to the will of God, when the rapture takes place, the man will be taken. If the wife is the one that continues in sin, she will not make it in the rapture. Well, if it is the wife that is righteous, then she will be taken and the husband will be left. Amen. I say amen. amen. So, we should understand this, that God also says, it is not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of God. It means that the two of you can be going to the church together, even coming to Holiness River Movement together. But then, if one of you is not keeping to the commandment of God, to what you have been taught, the holiness and righteousness that is being taught in this place, you are not keeping to the truth of God, then you will miss out. Irrespective of the fact that you are husband and wife. Uh, we'll examine some of the gray areas in church conflicts. Uh, I've told you, many believers say they are the head of the house and their wives must follow them to the same church. Many husbands use this policy to threaten or stop their wives from attending Horemo chapter meetings or programs and their wives are obeying it. This policy is not scriptural. Amen. I've told you from where we read that God is interested in every soul. Uh, the fact that the man is the head of the house, he shouldn't threaten the wife. Uh, many of our sisters are suffering under their husband on this policy that ah, he is the head of the home and therefore the wife must follow him. Uh, sometimes a denominational church may encourage the husband, maybe the pastor. I have had many cases like that in my state whereby the woman will come and say, my husband is saying if I don't follow him to where he is fellowshipping, uh, he will not agree or that the marriage will cease. And uh, it is not scriptural. They are just using some uh, 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 things which are outside the scripture to uh, threaten the woman or 
they look at some activities that has been laid down maybe the doctrine of the church or some other things but then the scripture has made it very clear in that ezekiel where where we read and also in luke and also when you go to matthew 7 21 where the lord talk about it's not everyone that calls upon him or call on him lord lord will enter into the kingdom of god and um, god expects the woman to protect has, I mean, her soul. It is not the, the man that will be protecting the soul of that woman. If the man forced the woman to follow him to where he's fellowshipping, and if both of them are sinning, then at the end of it, both of them will end up in hell. Uh, there is a, a situation over time that our sisters have come to understand that some things in some churches are not right. For instance, we have seen that there are some denominational churches that they teach this truth halfway. Some said they are called only to teach deliverance. Their own is deliverance. Others say their own is healing ministry. Some say their own is to teach faith. But when you go to the scripture, you can't find this there. You can't find this there. The Bible says, teaching them all things. And then, when the wife comes to discover that, ah, ah, it is more than this. And they want to go to where they will receive more teaching that will help them to go to heaven. The man will say, no, I am the man in this house. And you must obey me. It is not right. The Lord will help us to have understanding in Jesus' name. So we should understand uh, when we go to Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 7, 12 to 15, where the Bible talks about the unbeliever, that if the unbeliever depart, the believer is not under bondage, or that the believer is free. Uh, here, we are talking about unbelievers like the Muslim that don't even know the law. You are with another party or you are married to an unbeliever who does not know the law. Then the scripture expects that even when that person refuses to follow you to church or to serve the God that you are serving, you are not expected to send the person away. But in this case, our sisters they are serving the God that you claim to be serving. And if it is true that you are a child of God and are serving the same God, and these sisters are doing it right because they have decided that, oh, we'll dedicate ourselves unto the Lord. The, I will not go in the way of worldliness because the scripture says that those who love the world and the things of the world, that they are enemies of god and they have come to discover this and they say i don't want to wear the attachment again i don't want to wear the jewelries again i don't want to wear trousers again and the man is saying no you must do this you must do this which is not right even in the case of unbeliever the unbeliever that does not even know the lord the believer is not to send her away amen so a sister that is serving the lord he wants she wants to dedicate herself more to the lord then the brother is not to send the sister away the lord help us in jesus name that also uh, a situation that god says we are this the the the, the wife is holy by their union the children that will come out of them will be holy also because of what because of the holiness that transcends from the wife to the children through uh, the relationship and uh, also obedience to the husband has limitation amen in, in first peter chapter 3 verses 1 2 and 7 the bible says likewise ye wives be in subjection to your own husband 
that if any obey not the word, they also may, also, may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. While they behold your, their, behold your chaste conversation, coupled with fear, likewise ye husband, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessels, and as being his together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. God is aware that some husband will not obey his word. That's why he has put it here that as the wife, when you are doing it right, you live well, you follow the tenets of God. Through your behavior, your husband can be changed. And so we encourage the sisters to do it right. Don't go in the way of the world. And as you do that, we are also expecting the husband to see these sisters that God has even told them, treat them well as weaker vessels. Because if you allow conflicts to come in between you, God will not even hear your prayers. God will give understanding to us in Jesus' name. And also, they mean our brothers are expected to understand that God said, love your neighbor as yourself. If you are loving your neighbor as yourself, you will not want any evil to happen to your neighbor. And so your wife is your first neighbor. You need to treat her with caution and carefully. The way you want things to be done to you, also do it unto your wife. Don't do negative things to her. Whatever happened, God says you must forgive. Forgiveness is a command. And you must forgive because without you forgiving her, your Heavenly Father will not also forgive you. Uh, there's also a persecution of wives by a husband, which has taken center stage. When we look through the scripture, we will discover that uh, when the apostles were brought before the uh, leaders, the Sadducees and the scribes, in their days, they were asked to drop preaching in the name of Jesus Christ. And these people asked them a question that should we then obey man rather than God? And uh, at the end, they continue to preach in the name of Jesus. So, the sisters should see this trade as persecution. If you want to serve God, to dedicate yourself to God, the husband should not say, don't do this, don't do that. And uh, we should understand, or they should understand that it is a trade, and they must stand, like the apostle, the apostle that stood firm. And then, they are expected to present this before the Lord in prayer. They pray, asking the Lord, behold, they are threatening, and the Lord saw their mind and helped them and released the spirit upon them that uh, enabled them to pray, I mean, to continue with the gospel. And even when they were beaten, the Bible told us that when the apostles were beaten, they rejoiced that at least they were counted worthy to be beaten uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. So see every persecution that comes as an opportunity for you to suffer because of Jesus. There are some of the reasons why some men go into this. Amen. Some reasons. One of the reasons is some of the men are into occultism and witchcraft. Amen. In Deuteronomy chapter 18 from verses 9 to 12. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 9 to 12. The Bible says, When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abomination of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire 
or that use divination or an observer of time or an enchanter or a witch or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirit or a wizard or a necromancer for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord that God doeth drive them out from before thee. You will see that these forbidden practices that our God uh, kick against, these have taken another uh, form now. You will discover that people are into sacrifices because they want power, because they want money, because they do, they, uh, 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 they want different things. And then they found themselves into uh, witchcraft activities. And this thing, the scripture tells us that uh, where there is light, darkness does not function there. Amen. So, or more, for instance, is shining the light of God all over the world. And then the husband are not willing to let their wives come to Oremo because what? They will come to light. And as they come to light, all their evil deeds will be exposed. They don't want that. And more so, they are also against prayer. The wives that are fervent in prayer, they will be praying in the house. And with the prayer in the house, a man that is in occultism will not want that wife to be praying in the house. The Lord will help them and deliver them in Jesus' name. Amen. So also, we have a case of ignorance. Many of them don't understand what is going on in holiness revival movement. And that's why they want to stop their wives from attending holiness revival movement. Amen. And God expects that they should have knowledge. The scripture says in uh, Proverbs chapter 19 verse 2 that for a soul to be without knowledge that it is not good. And you will see that God expects everyone to have knowledge as to what he expects from them. God is the God of wisdom. He has raised this ministry to teach people everything not restricted a uh, thing as you can see in other places like i was saying here you will find some ministry that you will see as if everything there is right as i was discussing with my some of my brethren in one of the churches a uh, denominational churches uh they are not taking holy communion i was asking if god says you should do this as often as possible to remember uh, the suffering I suffer on the cross. Why is it that some churches are not doing it? And then some of them, they say, well, because they are now fellowshipping with Holiness Revival Movement. They take Holy Communions in Holiness Revival Movement. At least they are a I mean, an age above the denominational church. That is to their advantage. And many other things like that, that people are getting here. When the wives come here, they gain a lot of things. So the husband should understand and then support them. The Lord will help them in Jesus' name. Some of the reasons they give are not uh, plausible reasons for them to stop their wives from coming. Some pastor even support the husband to stop their wives from coming to holiness revival movement. And these wives are obeying, which is not right. They need to understand this. It is a... I mean, it's not something that they should obey. Also, tradition of men has also caused them. Uh, the Bible says, instead of obeying God, they have raised their own tradition, establishing their own uh, righteousness. And uh, you'll find that in some churches, they dance, they do other things that are not of God. But then, the wives have come to Holiness Revival Movement and have discovered that here, they taught them, I mean, they are teaching them the truth. Because of that teaching, they are now wiser than the time they were in that place. And they now say, ah, 
this place will help them to go to heaven. So the wife, I mean the husband, should not stop them. Amen. And then uh, we need to also understand that uh, many people are doing this thing because of pride. Pride has made them say, ah, we are the first church. Oh, our church is doing miracle. Oh, our church is doing this or doing that. And that pr pride has blinded their eyes for them to humble themselves and to learn what is going on in holiness revival movement. They are not doing that. Uh, we know of a man in the scripture by name Apollos. He was mighty in the scripture, but when a family met with him, he humbled himself and listened. At the end, he became so great in the scripture. And then, to the extent that some people were saying, we are of Apollos, we are of Paul, we are of I mean, uh, uh, Silas. So, if any man humbled himself before the, uh, I mean, the teaching and all in his revival movement, the man will uh, improve spiritually. So shall it be in Jesus' name. And then we need to also understand that uh, in all in this revival movement, God is using the ministry to open the eyes of the people. That's why many, as they come, they are now understanding the truth. The light of God is being uh, manifested in their life. And then it is something that the wife is doing very well because I have told you here that the wife is a soul. The wife has her own soul. The husband has his own soul. The wife is striving because the scripture says we should strive to enter. And as the woman is striving, the man should not stop her. Because God has said, strive to enter. For on that day, many will want to enter, but they will not be able. So God expect the man to strive, the woman to strive, so that at the end, they will make it to heaven. They should not allow uh, pride to clot their eyes. And then they expect worship from these, our sisters. They want the sisters to worship them. Worship belongs only to God. We have seen a man in the scripture by name Herod, King Herod. He made himself to be like God as he sat on the throne in Acts chapter 12 and began to speak. As he spoke, the people say, ah, this is the voice of God and not of a man. And because Herod did not honor God, the angels of God came and smote him and womb entered him and ate him up as he fell down alive and he died. So men should not expect their wife to worship them. Honor or worship belong only to God. And uh, as they listen to this, God will help them. God also expect those of them that have gone into witchcraft Occultism to repent. That's the only way out. Because if they continue with that, they will not make it to heaven. God expect them to do this. Repent. Confess your sin. That's what the scripture wants. That he who confesses his sin and uh, forsake it, the Lord will show him mercy. Let them confess their sin. Let them forsake the evil. God will show them mercy in the name of Jesus. So our sisters, we are encouraging you not to give up. Don't give up. Very soon, your freedom will come. Amen. I say your freedom will come. Amen. Jesus Christ is coming very soon. When he comes, your joy will be an everlasting one. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we stand and begin to appreciate God for the knowledge he has given unto us in the name of Jesus? Open your mouth and begin to talk to God.